Good morning, pirates. Calendar week 32, busy in the buildings. I don't usually spend a great deal of time inside and not asleep, but this week, in the final push for the one week to save the world, excitement is growing. We decided to make the guest rooms just a little bit more homely. Two of the most rewarding things at the barracks are making things out of wood, making things out of wood from your own trees, and harvesting grains. I think I've been growing my own vegetables for so long now that it's just normal. I still get the seasonal thrills of the first asparagus, and the joy of digging up a parsnip and it being fat and juicy, having been hidden below ground for the last six months or so. I'm not even sure if I haven't ruined my taste buds a little bit. Feed me food you grow yourself, and it tastes just how food is supposed to taste. Restaurants, especially out of season, are always, almost always, a disappointment. Well, not quite. I still love going out to eat for, for the experience. The food is almost never the best part of that experience. But the joy of growing a tree, halving it, or more commonly removing it from the forest because it is dangerous, dead, or full of bark beetle, taking it to the sawmill and coming back with planks, stacking them carefully, watching them dry straight and true for a year or so, and then forming them into something practical, useful, beautiful and new, is the slowest of pleasures, and therefore one of the best. This week I made a shoe rack, cladding for a room and skirting boards. I was talking to child number two recently, who is developing something of a passion and talent for DIY, and she had to rue the barracks and our relationship with wood. I grow. I have a lot of it. It grows on trees around here. Sure, I have to go through the cutting, seasoning, planing and shaping before I can make it before I can use it for making things. But what I can make then is in no way restricted to the quantity of wood required. If I pay two hundred euros at the sawmill, I come back with planks and battens that would have easily cost four thousand euros. And that's just the pine. I have some beechwood slabs here which would cost scores of euro dollars individually, and large fence posts that go for 25 notes each. I get to make solid wood bookshelves, skirting boards, beds and cabinets more or less for free. Most people have to go and buy the wood from shops. I kind of like this. One day, if I make enough of them, they might stop falling to pieces as well. There is really no other news, just been preparing for the climate laboratory, looking forward to the guests, and uploading things to YouTube. Until then, and for all time, next week, your pirate Ben. XO, XO.